Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a short one, and this is going to be a part of the new player guide. So one question that I get from a lot of people who come from games such as World of Warcraft Classic who haven't really gone into the MMORPG scene for a long while outside of World of Warcraft Classic, they come to Final Fantasy XIV and they're like, okay, so I understand that we have dungeons, I understand that we have raids, how exactly are we supposed to get to them? And so that's going to be the question that we try and answer in this video. Everything to do with the duty finder. If you enjoy my content and want to help support the channel, please consider hitting that like button and annihilating that subscribe button. So normally if you go to your menu options and then click the duty panel, then you have an option to bring up the duty finder. Normally if you're on PC, you just hit the U key and it gets brought up. So in this screen that just got brought up is a whole lot of information and I'm going to try and break it down piece by piece. So at the top, it says exactly what level you are and what class you're playing right now. Or in my particular instance, job, since I'm dancer right now. And then it says on the other side, what item level you are. And that's going to be important in a second. And then next up, it says roll. And so in this game, we have three roles between tank, healer, and DPS. Currently, I am on a DPS. Now the next section talks about regular duty and high-end duty. Primarily, high-end duties are going to involve things like extreme trials and savage fights. However, we are not going to be worrying in a new player guide too much about that. That is definitely more endgame content, but that is accessible here. Primarily, what you're going to really be working out of is going to be this regular duty section here. Now going a step further, you can see that we have this question mark symbol, We can you can see that we have these weird... Newer players describe it almost as like a tsunami, like a blue puddle or something. Then you can see that we have like a scroll, you can see that we have like angry faces, then we have like a dirt tsunami or something. Then we have like a like cross swords, and then you can see that we have like a happy golden cactar. So basically, all of these different options are going to involve things like duty roulette, dungeons from A Realm Reborn or other old content, new dungeons, guild heists, trials, trials from current, uh, different raids from past events. It's going to then have the current raids from the current expansion, then it's going to have PvP, then it's going to have Gold Saucer. And so what we're going to be focusing on is going through this piece by piece. So starting off with a little bit of a question mark symbol, this is going to be called the duty roulette. And this is going to be kind of one of the most popular things that you're going to notice a lot of endgame players go to, but it does still have a lot of things that even newer players are going to care about. We have things like duty roulette expert, which is just a more advanced way to... It basically takes the most challenging dungeons for you, and it basically throws you in them and you basically get extra tombstones. We will talk all about that in a later video. Kind of the same thing with the level 80 dungeons, level 50, 60, 70, etc. The main ones as a newer player that you're going to really be looking out for is duty roulette leveling. So one thing about these duty roulettes is that you can do them once per day and that they reset every day. So, and these give you tremendously large bonuses to experience as well as other ways to gain stuff. So things like gill, things like getting more tombstones if you're over leveled. Uh, you can get seals for whatever grand company you're a part of. That, that'll also come up in a future video. And so basically, it, it, it's like a massive boost to experience. When I'm making a leveling guide video, I, I, I do rely heavily on this. This is something that I have ran extensively. Another thing that isn't always available until you unlock more trials is duty roulette trials. And this will provide you with an opportunity to definitely get a good bonus chunk of experience, gill, and the rest. Next up is main scenario. And when you are through a certain part of the main story quest, no spoilers, you will get this option to go through this. And honestly, it is probably one of the biggest surges of experience. When I do the main scenario, or when I was like leveling up all my classes, when I ran a main scenario, it just jumped my experience. Like even from level 79 to 80, so the level rate right before the level cap, it was such a huge burst of experience. It was incredible. Next up is guild heists, then alliance raids and normal raids. And likewise, you can even see daily challenges, which is going to be frontline in my instance, and this is just going to be PvP. 
and likewise PvP is also another great way to level up. But the main thing is that this duty roulette is not going to really be something that you're really going to like... How to say it? It's going to be still a part of what you do even when you reach endgame. But I really do want to say that if you look at this part of the panel, you can see that it has little levels here. Like, do you roulette expert level 80 dungeons is gonna have level 80 by it? So that means in order to queue for those, you need to be that level. But for newer players, you can see that duty roulette leveling only needs level 16. And then guild heists only requires level 10. And honestly, if you wanted a really, really good basic tutorial on like tanking healing and that, guild heists are actually pretty good for that. I, I definitely would recommend newer players check that out. It's not the most experienced, but it's definitely good. Likewise, you can see a whole bunch of other things open up at level 50. Again, I am avoiding spoilers like the plague here, but definitely keep your eyes peeled for level 50 and definitely consider going to main scenario to level up. It is super good, super, super, super good. So now let's flip into the, the, the like world pool number one here. So this is older content dungeons and leveling up, you can see at the little bit of a right side here that you have level one to 50 and that's going to be a Realm Reborn content. So that was the first expansion. We're ignoring 1.0. It was the first expansion of this game. So that takes you from 1 to 50. Then the next expansion after that, Heaven's Ward, takes you from 51 to 60. Then Stormblood's from 61 to 70. And so if I open one of these, you can see a whole bunch of them. Like you can see Santasha and you see Tamtar Deepcroft and just a whole ton of them. So these are definitely things that I would definitely suggest you running. As well as uh, right now you can see that there's currently a Moogle event running. And if you want to get involved in that, definitely do that. But main points that I want to say here is that similar to before, you can look at the level requirement to see what you need. So likewise, Santasha requires level 15, Tantar Dipcroft requires 16, Copper Bell Mine 17. And likewise, you can see that just as you level up, you just have such a variety of different leveling dungeons. As well as when you hit level 50, there are a lot of dungeons. Like, how to say it? Max level, each expansion had a ton of different dungeons. Like, if I open up Stormblood and I scroll down, you can see that we have things like the Burn, Swallow's Compass, Hell's Lid, St. Marcian's Arbitorium, and the Gimlet Dark. All really good dungeons. And so likewise, when you're leveling, you're very likely going to have a massive diversity of things that you're going to look through. If you're worried about unlocking these, most, not all, but most of these are unlocked just by doing the main story quest. But if you are missing a few from your list or you're just like, hey, this doesn't really match, definitely reference a wiki or reference what you're seeing on the screen right now. <gasps> Sorry, I am like yawning like crazy because I literally just got off work and I'm trying to record this. I'm sorry. Uh, but basically, like, you have lots of different options for leveling up. And truly, this, I think, is one of the things that separates Final Fantasy XIV from a lot of other MMORPGs. It's just the raw diversity of what you get. It's just like you are getting expansions worth of content from 1 to 50. Then expansions worth from 50 to 60, then expansions worth from 60 to 70. And honestly, it's really good stuff. And then when you get into the like uh, Whirlpool number two symbol, that's going to be specifically dungeons for the Shadowbringers expansion. And that's going to take you all the way from level 71 all the way to 80. Next up, we have guild heists. And again, you can do the guild heist from the side with the duty roulette, or you could choose them from here. Likewise, really good experience for like actually learning how to do like tanking or healing or what the roles are. It's definitely a very appropriate tutorial. I definitely do recommend people check that out. And then next up, we look at angry face number one. And so I'm just going to close up all these tabs and you can see that we have Realm Reborn 1 to 50. Likewise, all the expansions through their respective levels. These are going to be definitely for the most part covered by the main story quests. It's just like no spoilers, you're gonna probably encounter the grand sum of most of them. I, I think that there might be a few that you don't directly encounter, but most of them you're gonna directly encounter. Now we look at Shadowbringers Trials, and likewise, you have all the list here. And likewise, you're probably not gonna have to worry about that right now. It's gonna be super helpful later. And now we look at like this sandy thing, number one. I don't know what newer players call it other than like sandy and watery number one or number two. That's what they've been described to me as. I'm so sorry. 
but these are raids and so likewise every expansion has a set of different raids to them and this doesn't just mean like super hardcore raids like we have a distinction between alliance raids which is a lot more casual and definitely like you don't need to worry too too heavy about mechanics oh god did i just do the mechanics of cars mean but basically these are a lot lighter and you shouldn't worry too too much they they, they definitely don't have the same intensity as like savage raids or extreme trials so do not worry about that next up we have the raid specifically for Shadowbringers, and likewise really good stuff then we have the tab for pvp and so if pvp is your thing absolutely unlock this and definitely go in there likewise you can see that i have a little bit of work to do <laughs> And then next up we have Gold Saucer and likewise you can participate in a whole lot of Gold Saucer events. Don't worry we are probably literally going to have a series literally just on Gold Saucer because it is actually a very in-depth and well thought out system. But, but, but that is all I want to talk about those tabs. So what I want to talk about next and to finish this video is this gear icon at the top left hand side. So it says open du duty finder settings. And so I click into that and now there's a few very important options I do want to make everyone familiar with. So there is an option to join a party in progress. And so let's say that you are running one of those Alliance raids and they have really good story baked into them for the record. I, actually all of this content has pretty good story baked into it. There's very few pieces of content in this game that don't have some kind of tie to the story or something uh, compelling towards the storyline. So we can see join party in progress. You can turn it on or off. I usually have turned it off lately, but if you're just looking to be like a DPS and you're just like, hey, you know what? If some DPS leaves something I wanna hop in and I don't care about the story, then totally turn it on. But if you are caring more about the story, just leave it off. I don't actually know what the default setting is, but yeah, you, you really need to weigh, do I care about experiencing it from the very start? Like um, Royal City of Ravenaster raid? yes okay then i don't want to join one in progress so i turn this off or i really don't care just get me finished then you can turn it on the next thing is something called undersized party and this one is a bit weird to explain basically if a lot of content requires like eight people to join it like trials and, and just certain events this allows you to go into this content that would normally allow eight people or require eight people only with like two three five or even just solo this makes it soloable but one thing is that level sync and item sync are going to be turned off and so this is important to introduce to new players because a lot of people aren't even aware of this but like let's say that i want to farm a level 20 dungeon or something as a like level 80 dancer or something so I would turn this option on and then all of a sudden I can just run into Santasha and basically cruise through it. Or I could level sync down and do Binding Coil of Bahamut just for random pieces of glamour gear. And I have actually done that, so yeah. But uh, basically, Undersized Party, it's just like... There are drawbacks though, it's just like defeating enemies are not going to give you any experience or items. And so don't think that you can like power level through this, That that would... That doesn't work. Another thing is that you don't need to follow role requirements. Likewise, you could technically queue with like nine DPS and that would be totally A-OK. -okay. Don't worry about that. Um, or not nine, eight DPS. Oh my gosh, I really need sleep. But uh, yeah, basically it, it throws all of those rules out the window, but it also definitely curbs like experience and other stuff. Now comes in minimum item level. Item level is something that we stated was at the top of the duty finder, such as my item level right now is 496, which I know is not all that great. But basically content has minimum item level requirements, basically to make sure that you don't basically go into content with no gear, which would likewise definitely really hurt. Like say the tank went in with no gear, is taking insane amounts of damage, the healer can't keep up, we keep wiping, that's not good. And so there are enforced item level minimums, but they're not too, too unrealistic, honestly. I, I wouldn't stress too much about it. It's basically to make sure that most people don't troll uh, or accidentally just become super lazy on an alt. Like they've already leveled up five characters, they're just on their sixth and they're like, eh, I don't need any gear, I'm just gonna go in it and wing it. That's, that's not fair to the other people, so 
they've enforced this. But another thing that this is used for is say you want to do like a challenge with your friends and you're just like, I want to do the minimum item level possible on this. Likewise, that makes things like the Binding Coil of Bahamut really, 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 really hard. And so definitely an option for people seeking a challenge. The next thing is Silence Echo, which Echo is, without spoilers, a buff where basically every time you wipe, you get a little bit of a stat bonus. And when I say a little bit, it actually does add up to quite a significant amount. But basically this makes it so that it, again, kind of like with the other one, you get a bit more challenge and that you aren't just going to have the Echo buff you, buff you, buff you, and you're like, well, clearing this meant nothing because I had like plus whatever stats. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is loot rules. <laughs> Do I want to say it? Okay, I'm going to say it. Basically, if you see Loot Master in a party, in a party finder group, and we're going to talk about the party finder thing in a separate video, but if you see Loot Master, don't join that group. Don't join that group. I'm going to go so far as to say that because Loot Master, Loot Master's lame. Basically, I, I, It'll make more sense when I have more context videos for this new player guide, but basically a lot of people do expert or how to say it, extreme trials I mean, for birds, for wolves, for dragons, or whatever the hot mount is. These have a low drop chance. Loot master basically means that it goes to the party leader, which in organized groups, okay that's sweet, but in party finder disorganized group usually means that they take the mount and run. I've seen a few instances where that's not the case, but few very few that's one of the things where, where if i see loot master i i actively avoid it so loot rules normal or greed only in this game you can roll need or you can roll greed on items and loot master just avoid that basically greed only means that if you're like playing a healer and a healer piece of gear drops you could normally roll need but and everyone else could only roll greed who wasn't a healer but with greed only Everyone, including yourself, can only roll greed on healing pieces of gear, which is fine. Then lastly, we have language, and so we have Japanese, English, and then we have other language options here. And so what we have here is uh, usually for most players who are in like English speaking just would tick off E. But I've definitely seen all of these languages brought up, and yeah. So what else do I want to talk about here? Um, yeah, I, I'd say, uh, actually, yeah, I, I'm not done yet. So if we click do you roulette expert right now, we have this little card on the side. And so this says at the top that, hey, this is do you roulette expert. Then it says the rewards that you get. And so just hovering over some of these rewards, you can see you get gill, tombstones of phantasmagoria, tombstones of allegory. Sorry, I can't, I'm struggling to speak right now. And it says adventure need tank. And so basically, whenever there is a role that is really needed and not enough people are queuing as that role, you get this adventure and need bonus, which definitely if you like flip over to something like Alliance Raids, you can see adventure needs DPS. So it really depends on the content. Then you get a brief description of things and it's just, it's, it just says what's basically going on. I'm not gonna insult everyone by reading it. Uh, but then we have information and it has a time limit most content does but don't worry if it's taking 90 minutes to clear an expert There's way bigger issues. This is duty type and light party expert dungeons light party means four Pearson event Rewards obtainable daily as I said daily roulettes is just gonna be daily and Cannot select with other duties basically that means that you can only select expert and that everything else is gonna grab like what I just showed on the screen and it says requirements up to one player, up to one player, up to four players, including one tank, one healer, two DPS. That is standard for this game. Is one tank, one healer, two DPS. Uh, undersized parties not allowed because when you run expert, it's expected to be a little challenged. And then class is any disciple of war of magic, excluding limited jobs. So that basically means any of your normal combat jobs, minus blue mage. It says average item level 440, and there's a whole lot of other stuff. And it, probably more important to people end game who don't have this showing is it requires completion of Grand Cosmos and Animesis Ander, but for new players, that's way too much detail. Normally, you'd be looking at something like 
duty leveling, where likewise if we look at it, we can see the rewards, gill, seals, some tome stones for me, but that's only showing for me because I'm level 80. Uh, then we have adventure need bonus, it basically gives you the same information and requirements on there. And yeah, uh, the last thing that I guess I could say would be if you just click into something and then you hit the join button, then you are queued. And likewise, you can see this duty finder here on the right side of my screen. Likewise, if you change the UI layout, it's going to be somewhere else. Uh, not sure exactly what the default is. I think the default's pretty similar to this. But yeah, it just says what you're queued for here. It says, hey, we're waiting for a match. Ooh, matchmaker. Oh my. And then it says, roll waiting list number and retrieving information for me because, well... I guess that it's just trying to refresh or it's parsing in the background or processing, whatever. So it doesn't know exactly what roll number I am. It's not too, too bad. And then time elapsed and then average wait time, 14 minutes, which probably means that it is oversaturated with DPS and that we need more tanks and healers. Likewise, if I zoom back, then you can see in the DG Roulette Expert, adventure in need is tank. So we need more tanks. And likewise, if I swap to tank and I queued, it'd probably be an instant queue. But sometimes, even if it's adventure in need, it's like healers faster. I digress. Anyhow, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and putting up with me. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, if this content helps you at all, please consider smashing that like button and annihilating that subscribe button. Anyhow, that is all for this video. I am going to be getting some sleep now. Take care and have a fantastic one.